All right, in this video, we will discuss a voltmeter, which is used to measure voltage. In practice, in a laboratory course, you will probably have a multimeter, which is capable of measuring voltage, current, and resistance, among some other things, but we're going to look at the model for a voltmeter in this video. So an ideal voltmeter, we're going to represent as a circle with a V in it, not to be confused with a DC voltage source. So sometimes those symbols can look very similar, depending on the context, you might need to figure out which is which. And to measure the voltage of something, for example, we are going to use our voltage divider circuit from a previous video. You would connect the leads of your voltmeter in parallel to the component you want to measure. Now, an ideal voltmeter, we will assume, does not affect the circuit it's measuring at all, meaning it does not siphon off any current. So if we have some current I flowing through our voltage divider here. We would assume that all of that current continues to go through the second resistor and that the current over this way through the voltmeter is zero. In reality, the voltmeter has some very, very high but non-zero input resistance that we model as a resistor in parallel with an ideal voltmeter. So this resistance, we'll call it RM for our measurement. And I'm gonna draw a dotted line around this part. So this is our actual practical voltmeter is usually very, very high. So somewhere in the one to 10 mega ohm range. So it siphons off a very, very small amount of current, we'll call that IM, but it's not zero. Okay, so it does affect your measurement, the circuit you're measuring a little bit, because originally, if I had my voltage divider with <clears throat> no multimeter attached at all, I have R1, R2, my current through here would be determined by Ohm's law and the equivalent resistance of these two resistors. But by putting another resistor in parallel with R2, I have changed the equivalent resistance here, that's going to change the current, and it's going to change the voltage at this point, or the voltage that I'm measuring. So again, hopefully this resistance is large enough relative to the other resistors in the circuit that this isn't going to have a big impact on what you're measuring, but it can have a non-negligible effect in some cases, so you need to be aware that this happens. So you might be wondering, well, how exactly does it affect the voltage? Does it make it go up or down? And if you remember our voltage divider equation from a previous video, if we have a voltage divider with resistors R1 and R2 and V out there, then V out is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vn. So we see that as R2 gets really, really large, this fraction approaches one and Vn will approach V out. As R2 gets smaller and R1 gets really, really large, this fraction will approach zero and V out will approach zero. So what happens if we add a second resistor in parallel to R2 there is we are making this equivalent R2 smaller. Remember when you add resistors in series, the resistance drops so as you make R2 smaller, R1 is relatively larger. This fraction gets closer to zero as opposed to closer to one. So your V out is going to go down. So in other words, when you attach the multimeter, R2 gets smaller, then V out also gets smaller. So attaching the multimeter affects the output voltage, makes it drop a little bit, <clears throat> than what you would get for the true output voltage if you could measure it with something that actually had infinite resistance. Another way to think about this is what happens when you measure the open circuit voltage of a battery. So in the ideal case, you have an ideal battery and an ideal voltmeter, and you connect them like that, then the voltage measured by the voltmeter is just exactly the open circuit voltage of the battery. As we learned in a previous video, batteries do have some internal resistance that hopefully is very, very small, and as we learned in this video, when you connect that to a voltmeter, it is actually connecting a very, very large resistance like this. And you'll notice that it's drawn a little differently here, but this is also a voltage divider because I have two resistors in series and I'm measuring the output voltage there. So call that my source resistance RS and my measurement <coughs> resistance RM. Call this VS. So in this case, V out is going to be RM over RS plus RM times VS, 
So again, as long as RM is much greater than the source resistance, which should be the case, so the measurement resistance of the multimeter is in the mega ohms range, and the source resistance of something like a battery is typically less than an ohm. So in that case, BS is going to get very, very close to V out because this fraction approaches one. If for some reason this source resistance is much higher, then this fraction would start to drop and your measured voltage would actually not accurately reflect the open circuit voltage of the source. So again, usually this measurement resistance is high enough that it's not gonna have a major impact on your readings, but for example, if you're doing a lab or you're asked to calculate a theoretical answer for something and then take measurements and the two don't match exactly, it's important to remember that the components you're dealing with are not ideal. So batteries have internal resistance, multimeters have internal resistance, and that's going to affect the reading you actually get along with other things. For example, like resistors have tolerance, so a 100 ohm resistor might actually be somewhere between 95 and 105 ohms if it's plus or minus 5% tolerance. I can't remember if I discussed that in a previous video. But it's important to remember when taking measurements with a physical circuit that there's all of these non-ideal things that might give you an answer that is not just the perfect ideal case. So in the next video, we will talk about measuring current where you put an ammeter in series with your circuit and how that's going to affect your measurement.